The thing about V is I've seen all I need to see. Doke V looks beautiful, clearly crafted with heart, charm, and tons of passion. Works of art require blood, sweat, and tears, so Pearl Abyss, I hope this performs well globally. Doke V is an open-world co-op action-adventure game with creature collection at its core. I've always been of the belief that shiny Pokemon should be able to roll any color. So, freak palettes where they actually looked good felt special. When monster collections at the core of a game's success can sometimes hinge on the designs of the monsters, but the companions in this game, known as Dokebi, seem to have their own customizations, so how they look may be entirely up to the player. With such style and variety in combat, traversal, and how much you can customize not only your creatures but yourselves, this game's looking for that money. From Pokemon heads, from Animal Crossing heads, and potentially even Monster Hunter and Kingdom Hearts lovers too. But how will this perform? Closer to release, players are definitely going to want to see frame rates in multiplayer sessions. Doke V seems like this dream fusion of all these elements that people love in other games, creature collection, open world, co-op multiplayer, character creation and customization, but in a gorgeous next-gen package. This is what games by Nintendo should look like by now, and probably would look like it if the money were going to the right places. But can developer Pearl Abyss stick this landing? Honestly, they sure as hell can't do worse than what we're seeing over here these days. Doke V started off as an MMO, and that's what Pearl Abyss knows best, with popular titles like Black Desert Online making them a billion dollars in the mobile game space. Crimson Desert and Plan 8 are upcoming titles, one being an FPS, crafted by Pearl Abyss, and if you're over 10 years old, you may remember a game called EVE, which people sunk star citizen amounts of money into. Well, CCP, the studio that created EVE Online, was bought by Pearl Abyss. I should be scared. EVE creator, MMO developers, and mobile game makers are like the horsemen of the apocalypse as it pertains to conditioning humans to crave the dopamine associated with spending coin on shiny rewards. What? I'm kind of disgusted with gaming in the West, so if somebody could come and just do this better, I'd appreciate a little bit of competition forcing innovation killing me. The initial MMO focus may be why there are things like fishing, flying kites, and dozens of mounts that still exist in the game. This is good. The more things you can do and the unique ways in which you can do them just create more photo ops for people to create and share scenes with their friends. This is marketing. I know directors of photography with zero interest in Spider-Man or Ghost of Tsushima who bought consoles and games just to dive into the robust photo modes that these games make available to players. The evolution of photo mode in games has made my heart explode. Being able to shift and alter the size of actors within a scene as well as manipulating the light source or their position relative to it is exactly the kind of tools invested in helping people achieve their vision. Doke V is a world with things to see and things to show, and if I'm to believe what I'm reading in some of these interviews, apparently something to share. Pearl Abyss, don't miss the opportunity to reach the world. Make sure the photo mode in this game is as incredible as Insomniac or Ghost of Tsushima's offering. The free marketing by people playing the game will make up for the development time. You can thank me with money and Doke V merchandise. I don't use the term hype often because it's typically artificial with people convincing you to feel a certain way. But with what I've seen technically on display, I'm hype. I'm fascinated, maybe even morbidly curious about whether or not this can be pulled off. A lot of people are going to dismiss this because of the Pixar aesthetic, oh it's for kids. But I'm blown away that you've mocapped so many body movements to sell the characters in this virtual space. It's mesmerizing it's like a little uncanny a little grotesque even but in like a, a weird way it's weird i like it biggest motion capture studio in south korea 
attention to detail with aspects that will actually matter to the players because it'll be fun. And it's coming to my attention that Pearl Abyss is potentially treating their employees like human beings? How the hell do you expect to get a video game done without the blood sacrifices? This game is oozing with style. It's flashy, energetic. The developers say that what's been shown isn't even 10% of the map. I'm a Jamaican guy in America, and I'm impressed with the ambition on display with this technically explosive game. Americans way over here feeling Korea's influence. I've forever been perplexed by the black influence on things like K-pop, and I'm interested in what culture is injected into this title. As technology catches up to reality and being able to create photorealistic environments, I'm eager to explore seemingly endless virtual worlds that remix and recreate spaces that are sometimes perfect representations of the real life site at that moment in time. But I'm also trying to see some freakish nightmare hellscapes dreamed up by like a schizophrenic inmate. Have you ever seen Old Boy? It's a masterpiece by a Korean filmmaker and you've seen and felt its inspiration as recently as this month. I'm currently playing the extremely polished Lost Ark MMO by Korean developers and I'm overwhelmed and thankful for this experience. Pearl Abyss has built its own engine that it's calling the Black Space Engine for this and future titles. Without any confirmation, they claim in recent interviews that they want to offer crossplay between platforms, so here's hoping Sony or whoever it is doesn't get in the way of that. When I look at experiences like Lost Ark and Genshin Impact, quality speaks for itself. It deserves every million it draws in because respect for this medium and recognition of the necessity of catering to the customer's demands and desires is what it's all about. Pearl Abyss. Over 20 years ago, I'm watching some goofy cartoon show. Pretty cool looking monsters though. Catchy song too. Next thing I know, I'm drawing the monsters, I'm playing video games, I'm collecting cards, I'm watching a movie, I, I want the toy at Burger King. I went from zero to borderline autistically invested in OCD about my favorites. Pokemon managed this with a bunch of people because it rubbed us the right way. A decade later, Pokemon Go hits and it's so different. In ARG, most people's first. An experience quite like that, most had never had before. Sound familiar? Pearl Abyss, you have a unique opportunity to captivate the minds and imaginations of those exhilarated for whatever this game turns out to be. But you're extinguishing that burning passion instantly by backing NFTs. And I know you're hoping to appeal to the Western market with this game and your future entries, but I'm offering you blunt honesty as an American consumer. We hate it. We hate NFTs and the very idea of any attempt at a quote, blockchain ecosystem as mentioned by your CEO, man, it's, it's dead. It's a hard pass. I won't support it. Most people won't support it. Comment how you feel about the idea of NFTs in this game, because I think a lot of these comments kind of speak for themselves, man. I think it's crazy. Like I actually, I actually didn't know with the earlier portions of the video that this is where we were going and and now it's it's genuine disgust. Do you know what I imagined you were gonna do? What? I know this is a very serious moment. But I for a second I thought you were gonna start making like sobbing noises. <laughs> <laughs> and now That's kinda funny. <laughs> now now I, I can't to know, know that you did this to the poor don't Cappy. <laughs> What if I put this in the video at the end? Jeepers? Jeepers? <laughs> you say shit like that? Yeah, you really do. Wow, what is Scooby-Doo, girl?